A gate agent at the airport tested positive. The airport says the worker was on the job just the, this last Sunday, so just a few days ago, and he worked several gates that day. Uh, the upside here, not many people are traveling, but there are still plenty of people that were exposed to that gate agent. Also, concern at Kaiser. An executive vice president for the health group says nearly half of all patients at the San Jose Kaiser had COVID-19 or were suspected of being infected. He told that to the Journal of the American Medical Association six days ago, he said that. Di Kaiser now just responding to our call saying the percentage of infected patients there at the San Jose location has gone down this week. Now, earlier today, Governor Newsom announcing that relief is coming. Since March 13th, one million unemployment claims have been filed. Four of the nation's largest banks have agreed to delay foreclosures and defer mortgage payments for 90 days. Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, Citibank, and Chase. However, no relief for renters in all of this. As for all the families, public schools in six Bay Area counties will remain closed until May 1st at least. Some districts telling parents they are prepared to reopen school on May 4th if they get the green light from the governor and CDC. Take a look. We have the latest numbers for you now. Today, more than 1,100 people have tested positive in the Bay Area. Santa Clara County still leading with 459 cases. That's 84 more cases since yesterday. Bay Area wide, there have been 27 deaths. Well, at a time when San Francisco hospitals are ramping up for that potential surge in coronavirus patients, one of the city's hospitals is now under lockdown. The city-run nursing home, Laguna Honda, on lockdown after five staffers tested positive. Let's bring in NBC Bay Area's Melissa Colorado, who joins us from that hospital in San Francisco. And Melissa, Laguna Honda is filled with hundreds of vulnerable seniors here. What's the plan? from the city. Well, Raj, this is a massive nursing facility, home to more than 700 people, people who are too sick to live on their own, people who need round-the-clock care. And we are now hearing that Laguna Honda is under lockdown as city officials try to contain a possible coronavirus outbreak that has infected at least five staff members. Meanwhile, at other San Francisco hospitals, doctors are racing to prepare for what they say is an inevitable surge in coronavirus patients. Yeah, so it feels very eerie because it feels like a calm before the storm. We've seen what happens when the coronavirus pandemic wreaks havoc over a city. It's happening right now in New York City, the epicenter of the national outbreak. San Francisco city leaders and ER doctors like Jahan Fahimi fear the storm will hit us next. We're getting a chance to kind of do a dry run as we look to New York and see what the challenges they're experiencing. We can make those preparations ahead of time. Today, San Francisco Mayor London Breed revealed time to prepare is running out. The city needs 5,000 more hospital beds and 1,500 more ventilators to treat the projected wave of coronavirus patients. We need to be prepared to save lives. We need to be prepared to take patients. Uh, right away. Breed says she's asked Vice President Mike Pence and Governor Gavin Newsom for help. In the meantime, hospitals are doing everything they can to make room for the surge of sick patients. And I am sorry to say that the worst is yet to come. Dr. Fahimi says he's treated several coronavirus patients who become critically ill and are in their 40s. We haven't gotten that huge onslaught to realize like if the few 40 year olds that we've taken care of that are sick, if, is, that, is that typical? Is that gonna be the new normal? And back out here live, Laguna Honda in San Francisco remaining under lockdown. Dr. Fahimi says he feels like the early calls for social distancing and that stay at home order. It did have a positive effect and possibly slowed down the outbreak. But again, it is just too soon to tell. And the city nonetheless is preparing for that surge in patients and it could happen in less than two weeks. That's latest here in San Francisco. I'm Melissa Colorado, NBC Bay Area News. Melissa, thank you. Now for all those people struggling to pay their bills, we have a few more details about the mortgage payments. We mentioned a 90 day grace period. Here are the details. Governor Newsom saying we said Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, City, and Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase will defer those mortgage payments for people who have lost their jobs or gotten sick. Now Bank of America will also do the same, but but their grace period is 30 days. Some other notes from Governor Newsom's briefing. More than 1 million Californians have filed for unemployment 
in the last 12 days. And the new numbers show that 51% of Californians who have tested positive for COVID-19 are between the ages of 18 and 49. 37 people under the age of 17 have tested positive in California. We can defeat this virus, but we can't defeat it unless we commit to fulfilling our individual obligations and our collective responsibilities to meet this moment. And we could have several more weeks of this process of sheltering at home. One other note, more than 24 million of those N95 masks have been distributed across California. Another 100 million are on the way. Not until May 4th. That's when thousands of kids across six Bay Area counties can expect to be back in public schools. That announcement this afternoon to continue to stop the spread of COVID-19. For parents and teachers, another five weeks of at-home learning sounds challenging, if not maddening. NBC Bay Area's Jody Hernandez is live in Oakland with what it means. And Jody, realistically, if they go all the way to May 4th, school ends like the 20th of May. So it's almost the whole year. That's right, Jessica. School, uh, the last day of school here in Oakland is May 28th, and now the schools aren't scheduled to reopen until May 4th. The closures lasting a lot longer than anyone expected. I'm hearing from families, and they're telling me things like, he misses you. <laughs> And I, I miss my kids. But Fruitvale Elementary School teacher Bethany Meyer will have to wait at least another five weeks before returning to class. The Oakland Unified School District announced on social media late this morning that it's among six Bay Area counties that have decided to extend school closures through May 1st. This is not an easy situation for anybody. We know that. Uh, but this is in the best interest of, of ensuring that we can actually stop the spread of coronavirus. The Oakland School District says it's working hard to find a way to continue instruction during the next month, but acknowledges many students don't have access to technology. A large percentage of our students don't have Wi-Fi or, or any kind of technology at home, so accessing the kinds of uh, learning that we want them to be able to do is very difficult. I feel like our district is not, you know, prepared to handle something like this. Oakland High History teacher Cole Morgan has been calling students on the phone as he shelters from home himself. He says many families are struggling with paying rent and keeping food on the table, let alone tapping into technology. Some students will be getting the support that they need and some of them will be left behind and that's just not fair. As teachers and students grapple with how to teach and learn remotely, teachers say they understand the need to keep schools closed. But there's a general feeling that this is the best decision to keep everybody safe. The Oakland School District again says they are working to find a way to get computers to children's homes and get everyone online. In the meantime, they are urging children to exercise their brains however they can. They say read a book, read anything, just keep that brain working. Reporting live in Oakland, I'm Jody Hernandez. NBC Bay Area News. Okay, thank you, Jody. Okay, social distancing gone wrong with an unusual assault on a jogger. The jogger tells San Jose PD that some men spit, spat, and coughed on her after she asked them to stay at least six feet from her while she was jogging. It had it on a trail on Communications Hill in San Jose. Some of that attack caught on camera. She described what happened to her to NBC Bay Area but asked us to alter her voice. He said, oh, are you scared? Why don't I just give you the coronavirus and started spinning on me? And then he kept hitting me on my shoulder and um, coughing into my head. This happened because she asked them to stay farther from her. Police say there are no suspects at this time and ask anyone who may have some information to give them a call. Well, this is an emotional time for so many families who have lost a loved one, whether they died of COVID-19 or other causes. Funeral homes are taking precautions and really changing their policies. NBC Bay Area's Marianne Favre joins us now in San Jose with a closer look. Marianne. Raj, I'm here at Bay Area Mortuary Services, and they have helped make funeral arrangements for those who have died from COVID-19, but they're also working to make sure that their employees are protected while serving grieving families. Instead of a crowded chapel of mourners, state health leaders say only 10 people can now attend a funeral, and they must sit six feet apart. 
which is why many funeral homes are offering a different way for families to say goodbye. What we are doing is we're live streaming our services. So those people that aren't able to attend can still watch and see what's going on. Bay Area Mortuary Services in San Jose has already helped families who've had relatives die from COVID-19 to protect their staff from drivers to embalmers. They've made some changes in how the bodies are handled. We will suit up to make sure that we get no aerosol sprays coming from our embalming tables, from water splashing, anything like that that could get onto our clothing or into our face. So we're using full face masks and shields and double gloves. While the CDC recommends protective equipment for funeral service workers, it says there is no evidence to suggest COVID-19 could be transmitted by the deceased. We are more concerned about the infected live people than we are of those that have passed from this virus. One concern that hasn't materialized yet, a surge in bodies. In Spain, for example, they've had so many people die so quickly that they've had to turn ice rinks and other facilities into makeshift morgues. Bay Area Mortuary Services says in addition to following all of the CDC guidelines, they have taken the extra step of asking that children and anyone age 65 or older not attend services here. Reporting live in San Jose, Marianne Favreau, NBC Bay Area News. Marianne, thank you. Well, the party is over. That's the word tonight from an event promoter about a party scheduled for Friday in San Francisco. San Francisco City Attorney Dennis Herrera said the promoter called Set San Francisco was planning and marketing a party for this Friday night at a club on Rhode Island Street. This, of course, would be in defiance of the state's shelter-in-place order. Herrera is working with SFPD to enforce that order that prohibits gatherings. A failure to comply is punishable by a fine of up to 1000 bucks, imprisonment for up to a year, or both. Well, up next at 6 o'clock, City Hall essentially shut down in San Francisco. We investigate the major changes and why this happened. Plus, first responders helping each other out, how San Jose's finest stepping up for hospital workers. I'm tracking some heavy rain, hail, even some isolated lightning. I'll have details on that in about six minutes.
One of San Francisco's most recognized landmarks, City Hall, is now virtually shut down. The reason? A security screener there at City Hall tested positive for the coronavirus. Here's investigative reporter Jackson Vanderbecken. At City Hall today, people found themselves turned away. The San Francisco landmark is shut down to all but a few dozen specifically authorized employees. It's really sad that now City Hall, which is this great, you know, beautiful public building that has thousands, tens of thousands of people come through it on a regular basis, is now going to be closed to the public. The order came as a sheriff's cadet who was doing screenings at one of the doors tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. In this alert to city leaders, Public health officials said that there is a low risk that the cadet could have infected someone else through routine screenings. But visitors still are now being kept out of City Hall. And a few blocks away at the Hall of Justice, more fallout from the epidemic. Two members of the police department's special victims unit tested positive as well. During a press conference today, Chief Bill Scott said 25 officers and two civilians are now under quarantine. We have sanitized that work location, and we had already restricted some of our uh, workforce from being in the office. Chief Scott says the department's investigative units are now only working in the office when absolutely essential. How well SVU officers can work from home remains to be seen. But just like closing City Hall, first responders and health officials feel they don't have a choice. Jackson Vanderbecken, NBC, Bay Area News. There are new rules and new hours at that corona testing, coronavirus testing center in Hayward. Now, since it opened a few days ago on Monday, that center has tested hundreds of people. Today, it actually closed early when it ran out of tests, but they are getting more. The center is now asking people only to line up either on foot or by car between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. And then again from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. The hope is that the new hours will make it easier for people to socially distance while in line. Now, testing is reserved for people who are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. That would be a sore throat or a fever and are homeless or over the age of 65. While the push to get more masks and gloves to first responders got a big boost today in the South Bay courtesy of fellow first responders. San Jose police delivered thousands of masks to every hospital in the city. NBC Barry's Damien Trujillo is live outside a regional medical center with the details. So where did all the masks come from? Uh, they were in storage uh, at stockpile, if you believe it or not, uh, Jessica. I did text a nurse here earlier this morning, and that nurse told me those masks are still desperately needed. So today's delivery was a huge shot in the arm. A city truck backed up into every hospital loading dock in San Jose. Inside, boxes upon boxes filled with medical masks. A treasure trove for the doctors and nurses inside. So this is just an amazing donation, a generous um, gift to the healthcare workers, and, and it's needed. So thank you. Each hospital in San Jose will get more than 9,000 masks. The department says that's more than a week's supply for each location. Where were these masks? All the credit lies with Anna Hawks who is our uh, police property supervisor. Anna Hawks realized the masks were left over from the H1N1 pandemic years ago. Police say the CDC deemed them usable, so the deliveries began immediately. We see that we have a surplus, then we certainly uh, need to pass it along to our other partners that are fighting on the front lines as well. The donation is the latest in a major effort to ensure hospitals are ready for the expected surge in COVID-19 hospitalizations. And it isn't just officers or companies. Some people have started many sewing lines in their living rooms, all in an attempt to equip those who are risking their safety to save lives. Our healthcare system and our, our nurses and our doctors and our even from our staff that is helping clean the facilities, our janitors, our, you know, everybody there is really putting themselves at risk and they're in thinking about the community first. And the Valley Medical Foundation even posted some how-to tips on how to make some of these masks at home. You can find that information on our website, NBCBayArea.com, with some CDC advice as well. We're live in San Jose. I'm Damian Trujillo, NBC Bay Area News. Okay, okay thank Damian, you, thank you. All right, we saw Damian in the sunshine there in San Jose, but we had hail in many parts of the Bay Area. Let's bring in our chief meteorologist, Jeff Benary, yeah. from the East Bay. Jeff, you got a lot mm -hmm. of explaining to do. It was pretty interesting to see that hail. 
Yeah, we definitely had been forecasting that rain for the past couple of days, even the chance of some isolated thunderstorms, and we are seeing that right now, even some heavier pockets of rain over portions of the North Bay, and that's really what I want to start off with uh, tonight and right now. As we look at the Doppler radar and satellite, most of the Bay Area is rain-free, but it's these small little pockets that are popping up. It's part of a system that's moving off towards the south, and you'll see right now over the North Bay some heavier rain just outside of Santa Rosa, uh, St. Helena and Calistoga. This is in the higher elevations and this right now is moving off towards the south. We've only had one lightning strike in the past 30 minutes but once again if you hear that thunder head inside uh, as this moves down towards the Enchanted Hills south of St. Helena into 714 tonight. Also possibly some heavier rain on the way through Santa Rosa into 655 tonight. Once again I'm doing all of this tracking storm tracking live at home as we have all our weather computers set up here as I'm doing that shelter in place uh, right now working from home. Uh, throughout Gilroy, we also have more rainfall that's moving in, likely staying with you over the next 30 to 45 minutes with some small hail as well. Uh, I do see a slight chance of a spotty shower tomorrow, nothing big, but the South Bay, as you can see it there, would have the best possibility. And the big, big weather story we're pushing ahead to into tomorrow is a frosted advisory for the North Bay where temperatures will drop down into the 30s. We'll have more on this and a full look at the morning forecast and my seven day and when yes you guys when warmer 70s 70s Ooh. and sunshine <laughs> returns. I can't wait. I think I'm gonna get the lawn the the Beach chair out and uh, my bathing suit once we get that. All by nice yourself on shelter outside. In, place. in the backyard, of course. Of course. <laughs> we will join yeah, you, you virtually, it. Jeff. We will join you virtually. Thank you. Up next here at 6 o'clock, Steph right. Curry is going one-on-one -on -one with the notable figure. We'll tell you who and why.
Royalty not spared. Prince Charles, the latest high-profile person to test positive for COVID-19. 71-year-old Prince has mild symptoms, is self-isolating in Scotland. His wife Camilla has tested negative. Charles' last public engagement was two weeks ago. He's had a number of private meetings, though, and participating at those sessions have made his aware, people that participated are aware of his condition. Queen Elizabeth, by the way, is said to be in good health. Steph Curry is sheltering at home in Atherton, but is also answering questions about the coronavirus along with an expert. The Warrior Superstar will talk with this man, Dr. Anthony Fauci, a familiar face to us now. It's going to happen tomorrow morning on Curry's Instagram account, and you can be part of the conversation. Dr. Fauci is one of the leading experts on the coronavirus and is advising President Trump. Curry is encouraging people to submit questions via his social media accounts, which he'll then ask the doctor. The conversation begins tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Well, up next, a long line of cars pulled up to San Jose's Cathedral of Faith today as the church gave food baskets to those in need. Really nice sight to see this. Every Wednesday and Thursday, the church gives out food from 9 a.m. until noon. Today, they saw the largest crowd they've ever experienced. 1,500 baskets of food were handed out. Each basket has $300 worth of groceries in them. We're getting so many new people that are really struggling. Our, our, our community is struggling, so we're here for them. With our partner of Second Harvest Food Bank giving us all the food, we're kind of like the retail outlet. We're the target, and so we give all the food out. And they said most of these people are working families with kids just that need to put food on the table. The church will be doing the same thing tomorrow. They also need more volunteers and donations, so if you can, please help. Well, up next at 630, could the coronavirus come back every season? One of the leading medical experts weighs in. Also, Congress trying to get it done, what the stimulus package means for you. The details up next, including an interview with Congressman Ro Khanna. Stay with us. Right now at 6.30, we're learning more about what's in the federal government's $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package, including how much most Americans will get 
once the president signs that legislation. Also today, a discouraging answer from the infectious disease doctor. Yes, the virus could come back in the fall or even next winter. So we need to be prepared for yet another corona cycle. Yeah, Dr. Fauci was pretty blunt in his assessment that we could get hit again eight to 12 months from now. As for President Trump, he lauded his administration's response and thanked the American people for their sacrifices. And social distancing, such an important phrase, and we do it right now. The more lives we can save and the sooner we can eventually get people back to work, back to school, and back to normal. Now, he said some large sections of the country will probably be able to go back to work sooner than others. Uh, that probably wouldn't include California and New York. The president also declared major disasters in California, New York, Washington State, Iowa, Louisiana, and Florida. Two trillion dollars, that's the dollar amount of that stimulus package that congressional Republicans and Democrats now hope will help rescue the struggling economy. Senate agreed on the specifics early this morning. Some of the money is aimed at boosting the stock market. Much of it will go to helping individuals and small businesses. Here's a partial breakdown. This is how it works. If you make less than $75,000 a year, you'll get a direct payment of $1,200. Families get an additional $500 per child. If you're unemployed, jobless payments will be extended for 13 weeks. Small businesses will get emergency loans to help stay afloat. And $100 billion is being set aside for hospitals. Nobody could have imagined how different the world would be uh, this week compared to four weeks ago. Uh, and so getting money out there quickly is really important. $75 billion also being set aside for distressed industries like the airlines and the cruise ship companies. The White House says it hopes to get individual checks out by early April, but again, there are no guarantees at this point. The mayor of the Bay Area's biggest city is trying to protect workers by providing sick leave for all. Today, San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo introduced a paid sick leave measure. If approved, it would give sick leave to all employees and new hires that are impacted by the coronavirus. The measure would have an automatic provision of 40 hours of sick leave. The mayor says he understands it could be costly for small businesses, so he is offering help like tax cuts that would offset the cost. Canada, meanwhile, is cracking down in the face of COVID-19, the country making unprecedented use of the Federal Quarantine Act. It has ordered any non-essential traveler who recently returned to Canada to self-quarantine for 14 days. If you defy the order, you could face fines or arrest. Up until now, Canada had only been urging people to self-isolate on a voluntary basis. Well, during this time of crisis, people everywhere are trying to figure out how they can support their neighbors who may be struggling. But not being able to do it in person creates a challenge, of course. NBC Barry's Garvin Thomas shows us how one group of college athletes managed to work it out. Keeping up an exercise routine, just for the average person, has been one of the challenges during this stay-at-home order. Here at our house, we've turned the garage into a temporary workout space. Now imagine you're a college athlete at the peak of your training with your season just about to start and everything gets canceled. You get sent away from school and separated from your teammates. The biggest thing has been like the emotional impact of all of it. Claire Smythe is a member of Stanford's lightweight women's rowing team. A week ago, she found herself at home in Marin feeling two things in great shape and wanting to help others. So I reached out to my team and um, a lot of them were feeling the same thing. Like we have all this training, like what are we gonna do with it? Like I, I wanna do something really cool with it. And so this is what they settled on. Five teammates using their indoor rowers called ERGs to row the length of a marathon. And the help others part? Well, they did it to raise money for the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. It was a really fun experience because Every time I would kind of really feel like I was getting really tired and I was feeling like a lot of pain, I would just look over to my computer that I put right next to the urn and I just saw all of my teammates doing this. Um, and it was just like so inspiring. It took Claire roughly three and a half hours this past Saturday to row her marathon and the team raised exactly $1,500 in the process. Bringing comfort to those in need from the comfort of their homes. Garvin Thomas, 
NBC Bay Area News. Very nice. Okay, thank you, Garvin. Okay, here's another uplifting story. Their wedding was postponed, but a Sunnyvale couple didn't let that stop them from dancing. I thought the best one was the best. That's the couple doing their first dance in the middle of the street. Neighbors recorded the two while someone played their wedding song from a car. The couple says they did their first dance at the exact time that they were supposed to do at their wedding, which was postponed. So instead, they did this. No date yet on when they'll do the real ceremony yet. <laughs> it looks great. Congratulations to them. We are back in a moment. We are going to go live to Washington, D.C. and chat with Congressman Ro Khanna about the stimulus package that's about to be finalized. Stay with us. Well, as we speak, the U.S. Senate is finalizing the $2 trillion stimulus deal. They could be voting on it in just a matter of a couple hours. Then it goes to the House of Representatives and ultimately to President Trump. The question now, though, before this gets finalized, who's going to get the money and when? And what about all those gig economy workers? We're going to bring in Congressman Ro Khanna, who joins us live from Washington, D.C. He represents much of the Silicon Valley. Congressman Khanna, thank you for your time. Uh, let's talk about this now. $2 trillion, that's a lot to just get our heads around. Let me clarify here. This goes $1,200 to anyone making $75,000 or less. Is that correct? That is correct. It would go uh, to anyone making $75,000 or less. Uh, we have pushed in the House for a higher number that uh, $1,200 isn't enough, and it needs to cover people making more than $75,000. But the compromise was $75,000 or less. And then for a couple, whether it's here in the Bay Area or anywhere in the country, $150,000 per couple, and you get $2,400. If your household income for a couple is $150,000 or less, you get $2,400. Is that correct? That is correct. For a couple, it would be $2,400. And then if you have a child, uh, you would get $500 more for uh, a child tax credit. And Congressman Khanna, what about all those gig economy workers, especially here in the Bay Area? So many people in your uh, district there are gig economy workers. Do they get impacted here? Do they get a check in the mail, possibly? They would. And that was something we really fought for. I mean, for delivery drivers, for home health workers, for construction workers. A lot of them are uh, not traditional employees. They're independent contractors. Uh, they will get this check as well. And they will qualify for unemployment insurance. They will qualify for up to four months uh, of unemployment insurance. Uh, and unemployment insurance is going to be $600 more than uh, previously. And just some of the logistics here, how will it work? If I qualify for this, do I get a check in the mail or is it direct deposit by the IRS? Well, that, the details are still being fill, uh, figured out and we haven't seen the exact uh, Senate bill yet. Uh, but 
uh, the concern is that it may take too long, that uh, you may get a check in the mail uh, in a month or two months. So what we uh, still need to figure out is uh, when those checks are going to go out. Uh, I don't think it's going to be direct deposit. I think it's going to be a check in the mail. Something pretty rare. A couple of hours ago, President Trump praising Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Speaker Pelosi having somewhat positive words to President Trump. Uh, does that indicate that this deal now is set to go, green light, in the next 24 hours? It looks like it's going to pass. There's one thing I think that's so important, though. Uh, we are giving almost $500 billion to industries to bail them out. Now, I don't have a problem giving a loan or a grant to the airline industry if it's a temporary thing. But what I can't understand is why the government wouldn't get equity uh, out of that. I was just talking to Vinod Khosla, who I know you know, and he said, look, these loans or grants should be on commercial terms. No bank, no private equity firm would just give a uh, give money without getting some equity. Uh, and there are many of us in the House who believe a taxpayer should get some equity uh, for these large bailouts. At the end of the day, though, or at the end of the night, we should say right now, are you somewhat satisfied when the Senate approves it and it comes to you in the House of Representatives? Uh, I know you're not getting everything you want, but are you satisfied you're doing this for the American people? I'm satisfied that they're going to give cash uh, grants, uh, cash infusion. I'm satisfied with the unemployment insurance uh, expansion. I'm satisfied with the small business loans. Uh, I'm not satisfied that the government isn't getting equity for these bailouts. And most importantly, uh, I'm not satisfied that we don't have a moratorium uh, on rents and mortgages. There are a lot of small businesses in my district, restaurants, uh, they're hurting. They shouldn't have to pay for these next few months uh, rent uh, to their landlords. Okay, perhaps we can see some addendums and other ways that you can help those businesses in the future. Thank you, Representative Khanna, joining us live from Washington, D.C. We appreciate your time in this very busy period of American history. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to explain the bill. All right, let's switch gears here. Let's turn things over to our own Jeff Renieri, who's been working from home. Jeff, I know you got all your gear there, so you're giving us top quality weather there. Uh, days have been a little misty, but you say it's going to get a little warmer for us now. We do. We definitely have some much warmer weather coming in that seven-day forecast and some sun with all of us sheltering in place. We'll show you when that arrives and where I'm seeing some heavy rainfall, at least right now. That's in about five minutes. All right, how about this? Her gym is temporarily closed, but the owner is still charging her membership fees. I'm consumer investigator Chris Camora. NBC Bay Area responds next.
NBC Bayer responds to a San Jose gym member who says her health club was inflexible about the coronavirus. So she asked consumer investigator Chris Kimura for help to pause that membership. Yeah, you can't go to the gym. Exactly right. Yeah, under the order right now to stay at home, gyms and health clubs are currently closed. And check out the parking lot. That includes 24 hour fitness locations all around the Bay Area. Well, member Amy Gazulas in San Jose says she wanted to temporarily freeze her membership until the order is lifted and gyms reopen. She felt that was reasonable, but Amy says 24 hour fitness plan to continue charging her and her husband monthly. They should have postponed, frozen, stopped everybody's uh, membership and stopped charging people for a service that they can't provide and people can't leave their houses to go take advantage of. Frustrated, Amy reached out to us and we contacted 24 Hour Fitness. Here is what a spokesperson said by email. We have made some difficult decisions to ensure our ability to provide services to our club members and sustain our business over the long term. 24 Hour Fitness noted that club memberships will be extended for the same period to cover the time of the club closures. But Amy said that's worthless to her because she pays month to month on an ongoing basis. She'd only benefit from a membership extension if she didn't renew. Well, after we made contact with 24 Hour Fitness, it allowed Amy to cancel immediately. They're done. It's likely we'll see more cases like Amy's for various memberships and services. Here's what we recommend. First, watch your bank statements. Look for those recurring charges, especially the ones on auto pay. Identify the ones you feel are unfair. Then contact the companies. If that conversation doesn't get your results, maybe open up a dispute with your credit card company. That step usually gets the merchant's attention. When all else fails, you can try us, NBCBayArea.com. Click Responds from the main menu. Coming up at 7, by the way, we're going to talk about gouging and what's being done about those $50 rolls of toilet paper. Yeah, Back to that's you guys. crazy. All right, thank you. Let's bring in our chief meteorologist, Jeff Ranieri. We are talking rain, hail, and hopefully, Jeff, some sunshine. Yes. And we're going to warm up as well. Take it away. Oh, we got that coming your way, Raj. I know you like that warmer weather and sunshine. You too, Jess. And we're going to have that in the seven-day forecast. But really for a lot of today, we've seen these isolated downpours, even some small hail. Nothing too severe, but definitely enough that had people sending us in video. And uh, we can show you what's left of that on the Doppler radar. But I did want to start off tonight with a wider look at why we're getting these isolated storms and why the temperatures have dropped so much. It's a storm system that is dropping down from the north, it's skirting the coastline, and this is why the cold air is pulling in here from Alaska, also Canada, all the way down to the Bay Area, and it'll keep the chance of some rain and also isolated thunderstorms, at least a small chance of isolated thunderstorms through tomorrow. On the Doppler radar and satellite right now, the one spot that we are looking at is up into the North Bay, but also notice some of this pink over Mount Hamilton and then over Mount Diablo. We have some low snow down to about 3,000 feet. So while we're stuck at home, if you have a view of the local mountains you definitely might see uh, some snowfall here as we head through at least the next hour or so even into tomorrow morning when you wake up let's get to that heavier rainfall it's right now over uh, portions of St. Helena and moving into Santa Rosa now I'm tracking this with the same equipment we have back at the station this is a live storm track moving down to the south here through Santa Rosa at 709. And we're also seeing this rainfall continuing into Yauntville with possibly some small hail through 735 tonight. Uh, if you hear that thunder, head inside. We have had a couple of lightning strikes with this, but once again, through tonight, we'll gradually start to see that tapering off. So the next big story is the cold temperatures. We're dropping down into the 30s here through Marin, Napa, Sonoma counties. So make sure to cover up those sensitive plants. Take the pets inside and be careful with any sp space heaters as we will be dropping to the 30s. I have the coldest weather here, at least some of it in the Tri-Valley. 37, need the heavier jacket. Some sweater weather for the peninsula and the South Bay down to 39. Over to the North Bay, 36. 43 in San Francisco, and cold and bright for the East Bay. That's how I'm calling it, 37 degrees. As we move through tomorrow, temperatures don't warm up a whole lot, so you'll need the layers, just 55 in San Jose. Notice the wind speed as well. It's going to be up to 14 miles per hour. So when that wind kicks up, you will feel a slight wind chill, making it feel like the upper 40s. Over to the East Bay, 57 in Concord. 
For the peninsula, I have 57 in Palo Alto, 54 in Daly City, and mid-50s for Half Moon Bay. We'll get sunshine in here for San Francisco and 55 in the Mission and 51 for the Marina. And across wine country, mid-50s for Napa, Sonoma, down to Mill Valley. My extended forecast in San Francisco has more rain returning this weekend. Not a big storm, about a quarter inch on average Saturday and Sunday. And for the inland valleys, want that warmer weather? Monday will start a nice stride of that with low 70s. It may be even mid-70s the way it looks now by next Wednesday's forecast. I know a lot of the parents at home are saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Right with those kids, that kind of weather, you can just put them outside for an hour for that <laughs> recess. So uh, I, I think it's going to take at least a little burden off the parents, right? I wish right. it was that easy, Jessica. Here you go, kids. Outside. We'll see you in an hour. Go in the backyard. Go in the backyard. Yes. The old-fashioned way. Jeff's <laughs> orders. Very good. Yes. I, will, I will tell the kids All that. Right. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Well, we are all, all right. trying to find new ways to pass the time, right? A San Jose earthquake star, have you seen this? Has some suggestions. You don't have to be very good in soccer. It's actually just fun to watch him, too. Stay with us. Have you seen this, Jess, on social media, all those stay-at-home challenges? Oh, here's yeah, a, those are crazy. Here's a challenge. Stay at home with the kids, try to homeschool them and feed them. That, that's the big <laughs> challenge. <laughs> try that with teenagers. <laughs> okay, now a San Jose Earthquakes player has created his own challenge, his own version. NBC Bay Anthony Flores has that story for us. His footwork is dazzling. What's up, guys? It's Tommy Thompson here from the San Jose Earthquakes. And he's challenging kids stuck inside because of the coronavirus pandemic to stay active. Is that the beauty of soccer? Um, in order to get better, all you need is a ball and a little bit of space. It's his version of the stay at home challenge. Post a trick on social media, then others try to replicate it. His video has gone viral. I had no idea that it was going to get as 
big as it did. And some are using whatever they can find, including things that are in high demand. And there's all kinds of challenges right now. It, it, it's good to see. I think it's it's healthy for everybody right now to, to take their mind off of what's going on. I'm hoping kids will, will stay motivated and through this ki these kids' motivation, the parents will be motivated as well. Viral videos are nothing new for Tommy Thompson. He pulled off this remarkable tribute to Steph Curry's tunnel shot in front of the Harlem Globetrotters. How many takes was that where it goes over the, the board and, and into the basket? How many takes did you see on the video? Just one. There you go, just one. <laughs> and so I actually do have one more challenge for all of the soccer players out there in the audience. This is what I call the two Zani. It might take a little bit of practice, but let's see what you guys got. So what you're going to do is juggle a couple times to start. And you're going to go around the ball just like that. Anthony Flores, NBC Bay Area. Right. I don't <laughs> think so. Okay, as we do every night, we want to show you something good tonight. A lot of singing. You guys ready? I'm ready. Take me out to the ball game. Today was the first day of a concert series in Berkeley. People stepped outside of their homes to sing and play instruments. As you heard today's song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Music concerts will take place there every Wednesday until the 29th of April. Unfortunately, if you don't live in that Berkeley neighborhood, you're not invited since you need to shelter at home. But some of the folks are sharing their experience in social media. Or Raj, you can start your own in your neighborhood. Go outside and <laughs> sing a song and tell your neighbors to do it with you. You've heard me sing in the newsroom. Shall I really do that to my neighbors? Oh, maybe you should do the trick with the ball <laughs> instead. That's good stuff. It's really nice to see that. By the way, opening day for baseball scheduled for next week, the A's and the Giants, but that, of course, is not going to happen. So we'll just have to wait for a few more months. Right, Jess? Bye. All right, we are not done. We are extending our newscast. We invite you to stay with us for a special edition of NBC Bay Area News at 7 o'clock. Thanks for joining us tonight.
we're going to own this moment. Uh, I'm not interested in pointing fingers and abdicating responsibility. We're going to own this moment. Right now at seven, day nine of shelter at home, how California is buckling down for the long haul. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Aguirre joining you from the NBC Bay Area studios. And I'm Raj Mathai in our newsroom. You mentioned day nine. Jessica will likely be doing this for many more days or even weeks now. We're also joined by Janelle Wang, who is working from home on this Wednesday evening. Hello, Janelle. Hi, Raj. Hi, Jessica. Day three of working at home working from home with a four-year-old. I have to admit, it's not getting easier, but we did have her, our first teleconference call, my four-year-old, and she found that entertaining. And we also found something on the internet that got us all exercising. I'll have that story in 10 minutes. Okay, we'll see you then in a little bit. Janelle, we'll check back in with you in a little bit. Well, some big headlines to talk to you about tonight. All public schools in all six Bay Area counties will remain closed until May 4th. This comes as President Trump appears to walk back on his comments about wanting much of the country back to normal by Easter. I'm not going to do anything rash or hastily. I don't do that. But the country wants to get back to work. In the Bay Area, more than 1,100 people have tested positive. Santa Clara County still leading with 459. That's 84 more cases than yesterday. At a time when San Francisco hospitals are ramping up for a surge in coronavirus patients, one of the city's hospitals is now under lockdown. Let's bring in NBC Bay Area's Melissa Colorado joins us from Laguna Hospital, Laguna Honda Hospital with the details. Laguna Honda here in San Francisco is a massive nursing home, home to more than 700 people, people who are too sick to live on their own, and they need that round-the-clock care. We are now hearing that Laguna Honda is under lockdown as city officials try and put a stop to a possible coronavirus outbreak. This after five staff members tested positive for the coronavirus. Meanwhile, all across San Francisco, hospitals are preparing for a possible surge in coronavirus patients. Yeah, so it feels very eerie because it feels like a calm before the storm. We've seen what happens when the coronavirus pandemic wreaks havoc over a city. It's happening right now in New York City, the epicenter of the national outbreak. San Francisco city leaders and ER doctors like Jahan Fahimi fear the storm will hit us next. We're getting a chance to kind of do a dry run as we look to New York and see what the challenges they're experiencing. We can make those preparations ahead of time. Today, San Francisco Mayor London Breed revealed time to prepare is running out. The city needs 5,000 more hospital beds and 1,500 more ventilators to treat the projected wave of coronavirus patients. We need to be prepared to save lives. We need to be prepared to take patients. Uh, right away. Breed says she's asked Vice President Mike Pence and Governor Gavin Newsom for help. In the meantime, hospitals are doing everything they can to make room for the surge of sick patients. And I am sorry to say that the worst is yet to come. Dr. Fahimi says he's treated several coronavirus patients who become critically ill and are in their 40s. We haven't gotten that huge onslaught to realize like if the few 40 year olds that we've taken care of that are sick, if, is, that, is that typical? Is that gonna be the new normal? Dr. Fahimi says the stay at home order and the calls for social distancing have had a positive impact, but it's too soon to tell if it has slowed down the coronavirus outbreak here in the Bay Area. That's latest here in San Francisco. I'm Melissa Colorado, NBC Bay Area News. Thank you, Melissa. A break tonight for homeowners. That is the news Governor Newsom delivered. He told Californians that four major banks will suspend mortgage payments for people hit hard by the coronavirus. Governor says at his news conference at Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, City, and J.P. Morgan Chase will waive mortgage payments for up to 90 days for people who've lost their jobs or gotten sick from coronavirus. Bank of America will do the same, but for 30 days. Other highlights from the briefing, more than a million Californians have filed for unemployment benefits. That's just in the last 12 days. Also, disconcerting numbers show that 51% of Californians who've tested positive for coronavirus are actually, as you heard, between the ages of 18 and and 49. 37 people are actually under the age of 17. They've tested positive, 37 in the state. We can defeat this virus, but we can't defeat it unless we commit 
to fulfilling our individual obligations and our collective responsibilities to meet this moment. Another note, more than 24 million N95 masks have been distributed across the state and another 100 million are on the way. We mentioned the update from our Bay Area schools, kids, teachers and all of us parents gearing up for at least five more weeks at home, challenging for millions of families. Schools will be closed through May 1st. The Oakland Unified School District is uh, working a little harder than others in terms of how to deal with all this to figure out how to continue instruction remotely. Keep in mind, many kids in that district don't have access to proper Wi-Fi and laptops. This is not an easy situation for anybody. We know that. Uh, but this is in the best interest of, of ensuring that we can actually stop the spread of coronavirus. This is what the public health agencies have been telling us, uh, that, that social distancing is the way to do it. And, and if we're all in class together, it's pretty hard to keep that social distancing uh, in place. So uh, all the powers that be here in the six Bay Area counties plus Berkeley decided that this is the best course of action. You know, some students will be getting the support that they need and some of them will be left behind. And that's just not fair. It is not fair. Oakland teachers who are sheltering at home say they're worried about those kids being left behind. Also, so many families in that district in Oakland are struggling just to pay rent and keep food on the table. There's also concern tonight at Kaiser. An executive vice president says nearly half of all patients at the San Jose Kaiser had COVID-19 or were suspected of being infected. He told that to the Journal of the American Medical Association. He said that in an interview six days ago. Now, we reached out to Kaiser tonight, and Kaiser responded to us saying the percentage of infected patients at the San Jose Kaiser has gone down this past week. A gate agent at Oakland International has tested positive for COVID-19. The airport says the person last worked March 22nd at a gate agent in Terminal 2. The agent was assigned to gates 23, 25, 26, and 27th that day and also used the men's restroom in Terminal 2. Those affected areas have been cleaned and disinfected and other airport employees working that day have been notified. Well, tonight, congressional Republicans and Democrats are hoping that $2 trillion will be enough to help revive America's ailing economy. The Senate agreed on the specifics of a stimulus package early this morning. Some of the money will be aimed at boosting the stock market. Much of it will go to helping individuals and small businesses. This is how it breaks down, at least what we know so far. If you make less than $75,000 a year, you'll get a direct payment of $1,200. Families will get an additional $500 per child. If you're unemployed, jobless payments will be extended for 13 weeks. Small businesses will get emergency loans to help stay afloat. And $100 billion is being set aside to help hospitals. Nobody could have imagined how different the world would be uh, this week compared to four weeks ago. Uh, and so getting money out there quickly is really important. $75 billion also being set aside for distressed industries like the airlines. The cruise ships have been hit hard. The White House says it hopes to get individual checks out early April, but at this point, it's still a work in progress and there's no guarantee. Well, late today, Jessica, a sobering update from the White House. It comes from the nation's infectious disease doctor. This virus could come back in the fall or next winter. Would this possibly become a, a seasonal cyclic thing? And I've always indicated to you that I think it very well might in the Southern Hemisphere countries is that we're having cases that are appearing as they go into their winter season. And if, in fact, they have a substantial outbreak, it will be inevitable that we need to be prepared that we'll get a cycle around the second time. Some real talk there from Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci says that that's why we need to keep doing what we're doing, not just now, but even these cleanliness habits in the several months to come to limit the spread and work on a vaccine. Okay, a big issue we're all facing is just feeling cooped up, finding something to do. Our own NBC Bay Area's Janelle Wang is working from home. And Janelle, you and I are on opposite ends of the spectrum here. While I was home last week, I had trouble getting people up before noon and doing anything. You have <laughs> Haley, who wants to do everything. Yeah, she wants to do everything before noon. It's very hard to keep a four-year-old entertained 
all day and you know they have to get outside but there's nothing you can really do outside except walk around your neighborhood because as you can see in this video even the outdoor facilities are closed I went to check out the local tennis courts they were locked up but there was a tennis wall next door that was still open so people definitely practiced their tennis there and took advantage of that as you know the playgrounds are all closed netting around them they're even a warning sign about the coronavirus disease but we did do something we did have a first uh, today I want to show you some video that I shot from inside my daughter's preschool had her first zoom session she thought it was the coolest thing she actually said mom this is so cool seeing her classmates and interacting with them and seeing her teachers for the first time in about a week and a half and she misses them so much and then my au pair told me about something on the internet called just dance it's oh, actually a just video dance. game but the high scores yeah you know about this the high scores post their videos on YouTube and as you can see my daughter loves it she loves watching the animations dancing to like hip songs and today her favorite was the Macarena so oh. I busted out those moves for the first time in 20 years uh, we had a 20 minute exercise dancing session and hopefully she will sleep well and early tonight so <laughs> I mom can get rested too. too okay next week when we switch again <laughs> we're also switching children because I'm taking Haley she's so cute <laughs> deal thanks deal. Janelle very nice. Uh, we know the problems here. Among them, a shortage of hospital beds and a shortage of ventilators. So what's the solution with this? Some Bay Area companies are changing their workflow and helping out. San Jose-based Bloom Energy usually focuses on generating power, on-site electricity for its customers. Well, take a look. It's pivoting now during this crisis. Bloom is refurbishing ventilators that have been in storage. Joining me now from their Sunnyvale production plant is Susan Brennan, the COO of Bloom Energy. Susan, thanks for your time. Tell me, where are you getting these ventilators and, and, and what's the deal with them? So first, thank you for taking time to speak to me. And we are receiving a supply of ventilators. We started a partnership with the state of California as the first step. Our CEO, K.R. Sridhar, reached out to Governor Newsom uh, 10 days ago, nine days ago. Uh, when uh, the the need began and uh, everyone was aware that it would uh, it would become uh, much more urgent so uh, we are a you know technology company we saw an opportunity for us to fill a gap we do service our own product and this gave us the opportunity to use the skills that we have at bloom energy to fill a need and uh, so we're, uh, we have repurposed uh, our line in Sunnyvale, California, uh, part of our factory floor. Very and interesting. Susan, if I, can jump in, if I can jump in here. So where are these ventilators? They're expired. I know they're old. You're refurbishing them. Where are you getting these ventilators from? And then what's the process? So we're getting them from a warehouse in Sacramento today. And I do want to put a plug in. We are looking for supply. So we've started with this with the state of California and this warehouse, but we are, if you go to the Bloom Energy website, we have both an 800 number and a email address where if there are other states, other counties, other hospitals who have expired or non-certified uh, ventilators that uh, need refurbishment, please let us know and we will uh, put them onto our refurbishment line. Well, we are happy to spread that word for you. We know Governor Newsom as early as uh, recently as yesterday thanking companies like Tesla, Apple and Bloom Energy there in San Jose and Sunnyvale. So after you refurbish these uh, ventilators, then what? Do you reach out directly to hospitals or does the state take them from them, from you? Yeah, this, yeah, these are the state's property. We are just an intermediary. So we're taking the ventilators from whatever the source is We'll refurbish them, and then we'll return them back to the original source. Okay, well, this is something good coming uh, from a corporate level. We appreciate your time. Susan Brandon from Bloom Energy. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, $50 for a roll of toilet paper. Yeah, that would be price gouging. Our Chris Camara looks at who's taking action to end this. Also, attacks on Asian Americans continue to rise here in the Bay Area and across the country since this outbreak began. So what's being done locally? We're going to chat with one of the Bay Area's leading voices in the Asian American community. Stay with us.
We often see this in a time of crisis or a national disaster or regional disaster, and we're seeing it now. Masks, gloves, toilet paper, all those essentials that we need now being sold online for ridiculously high prices. Now, Jessica, a call for a nation nationwide crackdown. Yeah, it really is absurd. Consumer investigator Chris Kimura is here with an urgent message from more than two dozen prosecutors. This is just outright price gouging. Ridiculous. And it's going on day after day. Let me show you what our team found today. Single packs of toilet paper on eBay today for 34 bucks, 45 bucks, 49 bucks. Free shipping, though. Yeah, over on Amazon, I'm joking. Over on Amazon, we found this box of gloves for $215 plus $54 in shipping for 100 gloves. Do a little bit more shopping, you'll see a similar box for just $13.99 plus $9.99 shipping. So yeah, $215 here and $13.99 there. Is this one gouging? It's a fair question for law enforcement. We're hearing that question from a lot of viewers like you. Since March 1st, our Telemundo and NBC response teams nationwide have seen a huge spike in gouging complaints, 106 in 25 days. So what is law enforcement doing? Today, California Attorney General Javier Becerra joined 33 other attorneys general who are calling on companies to better police pricing. They sent letters to Amazon, to Walmart, Craig, List and others. The letters urged them to have, here's a concept, have human beings, not computer programs, review product listings for price gouging. Human beings, what a concept. The attorneys general also want auction style sales of essential items to stop. No more auctions because panic bidding is driving up prices. Consumer watchdog Calperg says companies really do need to get ahead of this. A part of the problem is that Amazon and other online retailers are really playing whack-a-mole and they're addressing these instances of price gouging after they occur. So what do they say? We reached out to eBay, Amazon and all the other companies that received those attorney general letters today. Each one told us it's working closely with investigators. Amazon specifically said it's conducting manual audits and removing unscrupulous sellers when it finds them. eBay said that it is going to be blocking any items that are marketed as coronavirus related and it's not letting sellers post items like masks or hand sanitizer. Now we found several auctions just like that actually. So here's one for hand sanitizer. That's bad news. Good news though, when we click through an error message popped up. Now compliance does not appear to be 100%. We were still able to find that $49 roll of toilet paper we showed you earlier. If you suspect gouging, price gouging, some websites will let you do it right there from the listing page. Otherwise, you can let the attorney general know. The number is 1-800-952-5225. It is right there on your screen. That number is also posted to our website right now, along with statements from all of the companies that got those letters today. NBCBayArea.com. Click the main menu to go to the response section. While you're there, you can let us know if you encounter price gouging or possible price gouging. 888-996-TIPS. Jess, back to you. Okay, thanks, Chris. Well, racial slurs, vile language, even violence. Since the pandemic, fear in the Asian American community has escalated, as have the verbal and physical attacks on Asian Americans. Tonight, their new numbers show just how prevalent it is, and those numbers come from a new website created by two Asian American civil rights group. Joining me now is a very familiar face to Bay Area viewers, Emeril Ye, a former news journalist and a founding board member of the Asian Pacific Fund, an organization that provides resources to the Asian and Pacific Islands. Or community. Emerald, so good to see you. Thank you for being here with us today. L let's start with this, uh, the results that you got in terms of the nature of what's happening and the frequency. Okay, let me start off by saying that these reports were tabulated over a five-day period, a five-day period that began after Wednesday when President Trump stood by his use of the phrase Chinese virus. So from last Friday until uh, last Thursday until this Monday, um, this uh, data was compiled by San Francisco University's um, Asian American Asian American Studies Department, and what they found was that nationwide there were 435 cases reported in the Bay Area, 63 cases, and that comes out to a dozen a day right here in the Bay Area. They're taking place on BART in our city buses, in our streets, in the supermarkets. So some specific examples are people being spat at on BART, some right in the face, some repeatedly, also happening 
on a city bus uh, in the street. Somebody, an Asian person, had a car pull up. Somebody shouted Chinese virus and threw a soda can at that person. And even in a grocery store like Safeway, uh, an Asian shopper was there and another shopper came up and confronted her and pointed at her and says, you should be wearing a mask and not spreading the virus. So those are some of the accounts that have uh, been coming out. And the concern is that, you know, as this pandemic gets worse and it's expected to, and as the economic fallout deepens, that there could be more lashing out. Okay, so the president has started to step back from that a little bit because he repeatedly said the you know, Wuhan uh, virus, the Chinese virus repeatedly. Now he started to step back and said that we had to be respectful. He's calling for that. Uh, but in the Chinese American community, specifically in Chinatown here in San Francisco, uh, what do the people there want other people to do? And uh, what, what is the emergency fund that you guys have set up? And how do we help combat this type of xenophobia here in our own backyard where we shouldn't have? it well awareness is the most important thing i think a very vital thing that has happened is that our state local and community leaders have stepped up right away to speak out against this and and that is very important to try to tamp it down from the beginning what the asian pacific fund does is we are uh we oversee 80 affiliate agencies in the pan asian community so we try to keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on and try to provide support for the different um Nonprofits that are doing the work, such as Chinese for Affirmative Action, which uh, commissioned, helped commission this study. Um, on a broader level, the thing is that this whole pandemic has uh, hit the Asian community here in the Bay Area with a double whammy. Not only being scapegoated and shunned, but the fact that, um, you know, the economic fallout is very painful. Right. So in Chinatown, businesses were down. One store was making one $15 sale a day because people were staying away from Chinatown even before the Chinese virus rhetoric. And on a broader level, we are keeping in touch with our affiliate agencies to see what the impact is, what the needs are. And, um, you know, a lot of people are being isolated, cut off from their vital services. And it's important to point out that while Asian Americans have that uh, image of the model minority, Four out of the five ethnic groups in the Bay Area with the highest poverty rates are Asian and Pacific Islander. It is so a difficult reports, situation for sure. Yes. It is very much. And mm -hmm. we're glad that you're really stepping up and, and taking care of this. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And it is really great to see you back on TV with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Up next here at 7 o'clock, the three vital things to remember if you need to take care of someone who gets infected. Stay with us. As the number of confirmed cases rise in the Bay Area, it's important to be prepared just in case one of your loved ones gets sick. That is the focus of our Coronavirus Crisis Center today. The CDC provided some tips on how to protect your family. Number one, create a list of local organizations to contact, also medical officials like the, the person's doctor uh, and other people they uh, are in contact with, like neighbors, and make sure to enlist some backup if you need help with groceries and things. If it's a child, you want to make sure you have their teacher's contact information handy. And if it's a grown-up or adult, their employer handy just in case you need to contact them. Also, prepare a separate room in case someone in your family does get sick because they'll need to be isolated in that room and stay in that room so it's contained, the virus is contained there. And watch out for main symptoms, uh, a fever, a dry cough, and shortness of breath. Those are the three main symptoms of COVID-19. And of course, continue to clean your house 
disinfect your house, all the handles, the knobs, and wash your hands with soap and water. That is the most effective way to keep all germs and bacteria and the virus away. Hand sanitizer is a backup, but washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds frequently is the best thing today. We best thing to do. Jessica, we all have dry hands right now, so I also have lotion yeah. at all the sinks because we need that because our hands are so dried out. My daughter, her four year, her knuckles, one of them started to crack. So oh, I'm like, no. oh gosh, we gotta put Vaseline and keep that handy because she's washing her hands and she actually enjoys it all the time though. Good that you're getting her to do it. All right, thank you, Janelle. <laughs> Up next, how friends and family made a South Bay couple feel special after their wedding was postponed.